Hello guys, in this tutorial I'm going to explain the hex codes using the in and out programs. You don't actually need to know this, but in case you're curious, I'm going to explain it. So two different hex codes were given each time, one specific to the TI-84 Plus Color Silver Edition and one specific to the other three calculators. This is because when using a B call, a call to a pre-written subroutine within the operating system, the memory addresses of the calls were changed on the TI-84 Plus Color Silver Edition. So essentially you have code that is part of the operating system, pre-written, that you can call and use within your programs. And in the new calculator, the TI-84 Plus Color Silver Edition, new-ish, um, those calls were changed. Their memory addresses, where they're located in the operating system, was changed. This means that the addresses had to be changed in the hex codes. Calling the wrong address would cause the calculator to crash, usually. The B calls are EF followed by an address. So, if you don't know anything about hex codes, basically every two characters is a byte of data. It's a hexadecimal number that represents a byte. And since the Z80 processor is a 8-bit processor, um, you're just going to use one byte to specify an instruction for the processor. So EF, that's our one byte instruction that tells the processor we're about to um, do a B call. And so then you need to follow that up with a memory address to the call. Now actually, in the um, processor, what literally happens is when you um, do EF then a memory address, it simply jumps to a constant position in um, memory. So it's constant. The memory address you put here doesn't actually jump to that memory address. It jumps to this constant position where then the operating system has code there that will read where you jumped from and then read this data and then jump to that call. So basically if you're getting confused the EF says we're going to do a B call and then these two um, these two bytes is the memory address of the call. Now this is a little Indian processor meaning it's backwards, so we do 4AD7 for the memory address, um, e and, but we write it as D74A, even though it's actually 4AD7. Notice how the only lines that are different in the two calculators is the ones after the EF. The D300 and C9 are both the same, but the EF C24A, EF D74A, those are different. For the explanations of what these hex codes mean, I'll only be taking a look at the TI-83+, 4+, and 4+, Silver Edition versions of the code, so I'm just not going to show this version, But the because the explanation is the same for both. So here we have the out program. So basically, up here, this line, this isn't actually part of the code, that's just the file name. Um, here you have the assembly header, which tells the calculator this is an assembly program so you have to have the assembly header at the top but then we actually get started with the hex codes we first do a B call um, this specific call 4AD7 goes to recall ants recall ants basically um, tells the calculator to uh, take the value that's stored in ants the variable ants and move it into this uh, register called OP1. Then when we do this B call, conv OP1, that tells the operating system to, or that tells the calculator to convert the value in OP1 um, into uh, a number, into a, a just a normal register. But the lower the lower a byte of what it converts is stored in the um, register A. So basically we're saying take these two lines together, you're basically taking the value in ants and taking uh, converting it to a number, which the lower byte of that number is stored in A. So if I have there's a the integer 3 stored in ants, then a, a 3 would be ended up, 3 would basically end up being stored in A. If 0 is in ants, 0 would be stored into A. 
then out to zero comma a this is what this d300 is this says um d3 is the processor instruction to um write data to a port um, and that it writes the data stored in the address A, and the port is the next byte, and that's zero. Port zero is your I.O. port. So there's several ports, but zero is the I.O. port. Um, so we're just saying to write that number to the I.O. port. Then ret, that means return. We're done our code. All, all hex code you'll see end with C9. So essentially we take the value in the ants, we convert it um, to the A register, and then we write the A register out the port, um, the I.O. port. Then we return. So here are some resources. So this link will explain uh, recall ants for you. Um, this one will explain conv op1. And this is the opcode reference chart that it will basically tell you. It just lists operations and what they mean so like it will tell you that ef is is defined as rst 28h which is the b call if for like c9 it'll say ret it define it as return so that's just your reference chart for what those operations mean so exp um this is the end code so this one's slightly longer but it's still not that complicated um so the first line, we're reading from a port, we're reading from port 0, so db tells the processor to read from a port, and we're reading from port 0. So the, what we read gets stored in the A register. Then we load into the H register, 0, then we load into the L register, A. So the 2600, that says load into the H register, 0, then 6F says load into the L register, A. And the reason we do that is because if you combine the HL reg the H and L register together, you get the HL register, which is a two byte register. So we're just making the top the most significant byte zero and the the least significant byte A. So that means the HL register, the two byte register, would simply hold the value of A. So we're reading from the port and then we're uh, writing that data or moving the data into A, the A register. Then we're doing the B call set xxxxop2. It's a weird name for a uh, register, but it basically says take um take the value in HL and store it into the op2 register, and then we say do the B call op2 to op1 which will move the value from op2 into op1 register then we're calling stow ants or store ants which will store the value in the op1 register into um the variable ants so this these are uh four b calls so that's why you have ef or three b calls that's why you have ef three times and those are just the memory addresses of them so basically all you're saying is load read from the IO port um in, in which into the A register that value is moved into the HL register then which is moved into OP2 which is then moved into OP1 which is then stored in the ANS variable so you're essentially taking the value you read from port 0 and storing it into the ANS variable so here are some resources. Um, I could not find um, for stow ants and uh, set xxxx op1 and op2 to op1. I couldn't actually find these on the uh, TI Basic Wiki. So I linked to a couple links uh, from forums that will that somewhat discuss them. But it's hard to find resources for how these work. It took me forever to figure out how Stoance works. But these link are links to two forum posts that might actually help. And then again, a link to the opcode reference chart.